This is my awesome dog Shiva and a central machinery metal cutting bandsaw that I picked up at a yard sale for $20. It's broke. It does not work. It's really beaten up badly. But I think I can make it into a usable piece of equipment and that is today's project. Okay, first things first, this motor seized up, so let's see if we can get it to move at all with the pipe wrench. Okay, it'll move, but it's pretty tight. Okay, so I opened this up and I found a centrifugal brake, but even when I manually open it, it's still really stiff to turn. So uh, there were two wasp nests in there. This thing sat out for a long time. I'm gonna have to open it all the way up and uh, probably change the bearings. Okay, so I've reconsidered. I'm just going to replace these bearings. More wasp nests. All in all, it's looking okay. Okay, so I've had my armature in the freezer for about half an hour, and this bearing in the sun for about half an hour. Now we can put them together. Okay, now we can finish putting the motor together. Okay, here's the motor, mostly back together. It's spinning nice and free now. So we're gonna plug it in and see if it smokes. And when you, when you uh, do this, always clamp the motor to your bench. Here, here we go. All right, music to my ears. Okay, there's the main gearbox and that looks really good inside. So I think I'm gonna just button that back up and leave it alone. After looking at the gearbox, it looks pretty good. Turning it by hand feels pretty good. I still want to pull these wheels off and get a look at the bearings underneath, and that's next. Okay, this looks pretty rusty, but it still moves. So that's, that's pretty good too. I still want to take it apart, clean it, lube it. That's actually looking pretty good too that blade guide. Uh, at this point I'm just going to clean this and see how it turns out. Something I didn't notice until I was editing the video is that this is the take-up blade guide and uh, it was mounted where the payout blade guide should have been. Okay well that's just a bushing and it looks pretty good. I'm gonna just clean that, lube it, put it back together. Okay so I pulled the top end off and the casting looks pretty good. Um, some stuff around here is a little bit wobbly, but it's, it's all in all, it's okay. Okay, so I was able to tighten it up, and uh, it's nice and solid now. Um, I've taped off everything. I've decided not to remove the wiring because the uh, plastic is old, and I'm worried if I take it out, it's just going to crumble, and then I'll be stuck with no hardware. So I'm just going to hold the wires out of the way, and I've masked everything off that doesn't need paint, and now I'm going to paint it. Judging by this wear pattern on the idler wheel, this blade was probably riding halfway off it, and that explains some scraping marks I saw on the inside of the cover also. Um, this was probably never set up properly, but uh, that's going to change now. Here's where we are so far. I've cleaned, scrubbed, and repainted all the, all the surfaces that get paint. I have ordered new bearings because uh, on closer inspection the blade guide bearings uh, were thrashed. The only thing left to do is remove the rust from the things that are rusty, and uh, there's not much. 
just the stuff in this pan here. And my favorite way to do that is with vinegar, uh, which I will uh, just add this in. Now this pan is not deep enough to submerge everything. So for the next couple of hours, I'll just keep rotating this over and over. And then uh, in the morning, I'll come scrub it with a uh, soft bristle wire brush and that uh, rust will just disappear. So here's the thing about using vinegar. It's an acid. Acids are oxidizers. And what will happen is if you don't apply a new finish to this unpainted uh, metal, uh, it will rust right before your very eyes. Now, this one here is chrome plated, but I'm going to apply a little bit of finish to it anyway. Um, I'm a big fan of paste wax. It uh, works on tables and also works on tools. Now, these, this thing here actually has threads in it, so I'm going to want to put some oil in the threads. So I took it apart yesterday. Let's see if I can figure out how to get it back together today. Okay, so it's mostly back together. I still need to do the blade guides, uh, but everything else is in. And something's missing. Something is missing. There was no lower bolt for this, and I, I think it probably didn't have one. If you have a look how this receiver is here, it slides in this slot. and. And this is what the uh, movable jaw rides in here through this lead screw. So over here on this pivoting jaw, there should be a similar thing, a, a slotted uh, nut that, that rides in that slot. And uh, I did not get that with the bandsaw, so I'm going to have to make that. So there are many ways this could be made. This is the way I'm going to make it. This is a piece of quarter inch angle iron, a hunk of scrap. I'm going to just come underneath with my silver streak and mark the arc. Okay, so there's the arc. I'm going to cut that out, make it a little big, grind it to fit, drill it and tap it. And I'm going to use my other metal band saw to do it. Okay, so here's my sliding nut gadget. And it rides in there just like it should. Now one thing is I need to round this off because this will not go completely square because that won't go far enough into the back. Okay, so that fits just right. Okay, at this point I feel good to just run it and see what happens. Woo! And that switch needs to be replaced. Hey, so I want to take a second to talk about Amazon. Last night at 7 o'clock, I uh, decided I was going to change the blade guide bearings. And I went over to the Motion Industries website and saw that they would be like $12 each. Um, and decided against that, went to Amazon, got a 10-pack for $7.90, and it was delivered 17 hours later. Now, isn't that incredible? So we're putting new bearings in the blade guides. Okay, so I think I've got all this set up. I put a new switch in. Let's turn it on, see if it smokes. 
That's looking okay. Now, you may recall from earlier, this wheel was out of adjustment. So let me, uh, let me tighten that up. It's already, the blade is already beginning to ride out. So there's an adjustment for that on the other side. I think it's time to try and cut something. We'll start with something simple, a piece of half inch square tubing. Success. Let's cut something bigger. Okay, so look real close here. The bottom of the cut is a quarter of an inch away from the blade. During the cut down, it was pulling the blade. The blade was walking in, inward. And I don't know what causes that, but I'm going to investigate it, find out. It's kind of hard to see, but about on the right hand side, there's about a 64th of an inch gap. But then, this is the down cut. On the down cut, look at that, it almost, the blade walked in almost a 3 16ths of an inch. And I don't know how to fix that yet. Only one thing left to do. Well, that turned out every bit as well as I could have hoped. Um, I still need to figure out why that blade walks itself inward uh, during a cut. And uh, I suspect there's an adjustment out there, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll do some research and try to figure it all out. I know this, uh, that saw is running better than it ever has, because uh, as I was taking it apart, it was obvious to me that it had never been properly set up. Uh, from the day it was uh, unwrapped out of the box. Um, this is what happens when people don't read the instructions, right? Who's guilty of that? Instructions. So here's the final summation. I bought that thing for $20 at a yard sale. I spent $30 on bearings, $10 on paint, $5 for that new switch. So that's 65 bucks. And I've probably got six or seven hours into the teardown and the rebuild. But uh, 65 bucks in six or seven hours, that's not such a bad deal for a saw that sells for 250 bucks. If I learn how to make it cut straighter and uh, I'm able to resolve that issue, I'll be posting uh, the fix and the results of that endeavor on Instagram. And you can find me there under the name wildman.tech. So that's all for today. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.